What's up guys, my name is Artagriel and I am a member of the Onyx Angels team and today we're going to be doing a little deck structure here on the Dueling Network. Now, before we actually get into the deck and what's in it, I would like to say that this is one of my personal favorites. It carried me through for a long time here on Dueling Network when I was just getting started, just learning how to play. And also, it is the official test deck for our clan, the Archangels, here on Dueling Network. If you have any interest in joining, just go ahead and find myself or my partner and leader, the Angel of Death 1, here on the Dueling Network. Uh, just message us. Um, we'll be happy to provide you with information about the clan and how to join. And if you are interested, then this would be a good video for you to watch to kind of get an idea of how the deck works and how you can counter it. But I should say that my deck is a variation of the official deck. I have I've removed some cards that are in the official deck and I have added cards of my own that I think work better than the cards I maybe replaced. And so, uh, <laughs> don't, uh, don't focus on this particular structure too much, and I will name what cards I, uh, I kind of put in as later additions so that you can notice them, but, uh, uh, let's just go ahead and get into this. Um, first up, we've got two Worm Links. Now, this card is helpful because using its flip effect we can draw a card during each player's end phase. So we're in, when we're in a really, really tight spot, this card can be helpful because it can help us get to maybe a card we've been holding out for faster. Um, after that, we've got three Effect Veilers. Now I'm just going to come out and say it. These guys are shit on the field. They literally have zero attack and zero defense. The only thing these are good for are their effect, which is, during your opponent's main phase, you can send your effect veiler from your hand to the graveyard and target one face-up effect monster that your opponent has and go ahead and negate its effect for the rest of the turn. So it can, it can be kind of helpful for buying you a turn from a monster's particularly douchebag effect. Uh, after those guys, we've got three Stealth Birds. Now these guys, uh, their effect allows us to flip summon them and deal 1,000 damage um, per flip summon. And actually, I said that wrong. It doesn't allow us to flip summon them. There's no, there's no card that says the only way you can uh, summon this is by flip summoning, at least not that I know of. And there's no card that, you know... Um, Outlaws flip summoning that I know of, so <laughs> don't, don't pay attention I to my rambling. I'm honestly not a great speaker, but uh, I, I get by. I get by. Um, and its second effect allows us to set it face down. So if we can keep our opponent from destroying Stealth Bird, then we can just spam this guy for the whole game and win that way. It's, it's actually kind of nice. After him, we've got Neo Air Hummingbird. Now, the reason we've got this guy in here is we can spam health. Once per turn, uh, we gain 500 life points for each card in our opponent's hand. So the only way you're not getting life with this card on the field is if, uh, <laughs> if your opponent is smart enough to remove all cards from their hand which can be pretty difficult to do sometimes especially if you're one of those one of those uh, decks that's really focusing on powerhousing because then you gotta have level 5 and higher monsters that require a tribute uh, after him we've got two marshmallows now we have these guys number one because they can't be destroyed by battle so again if you're focused on powerhousing you run into a marshmallow and you're fucked because you focused on powerhousing. You didn't focus on alternative ways to, you know, clear the field. You, you just kind of thought, oh, okay, I'll just destroy any monster that comes at me. Well, guess what? 
Marshmallow can't be destroyed by battle, so fuck you, asshole. <laughs> but uh, if you do have this card, you want to go ahead and set it instead of normal summoning it. Because if your opponent does attack it and it's face down during set attack, your opponent de or gets dealt 1,000 points of damage. So it's, it's kind of a nice taunt card because not only do they get dealt 1,000 points, but it can't be destroyed by battle as well. So it's really handy and it's, it's kind of a nice little haha, fuck you, should have paid more attention type of card. Uh... After those, we have three giant germs. Now, this this card is kind of nice. It also has the potential to be a bit of a uh, double-bladed sword. Because, uh, or double-edged sword. Double-edged sword. That's what the word I was looking for, term I was looking for, rather. But, uh, when your opponent destroys it, uh, he takes 500 points of damage. And, you can special summon any number of giant germs from your deck to the field in face-up attack position. Now that's where the double-edged sword bit comes in because you have to for, uh, summon them in attack. You cannot summon them in defense. So, you know, if your opponent has more monsters uh, with a thousand attack higher, or with more higher than a thousand attack, rather, um, they can destroy your giant germs and you still take damage, but they still take damage as well because, you know, 500 points each time it's destroyed. Uh, and of course, you can you, you can only summon two because you can only have three car three of each card type in your deck, which I I think sucks, but at the same time I get it. And you know there are there are some ways around it, but still. Uh, after that, we've got Satellar Knight Awesome. Now, in our regular burn deck, this this card does have the highest attack points. It doesn't in my burn deck, but in the test deck it does. So it our attack points top at 1,400. And this card, uh, the only reason we have it in here is because when it's summoned, um, it allows us to inflict 1,000 points of damage to our opponent. After that, it's it's pretty much useless to us. Once it's summoned, we really don't give a fuck if you destroy it or not. We really don't. It's it's more useful to us in the grave at that point. Um, then we've got a Spirit Reaper. And this card, it can't be destroyed by battle. And if you land a successful attack, a successful direct attack on your opponent's life points, you can choose one card from the graveyard... I mean, not one card from the graveyard, one card from your opponent's hand and send it to the graveyard. And then uh, the only downside is if there's an effect that targets Spirit Reaper, when the effect is resolved, you have to destroy Spirit Reaper. But, um, you know, a lot of the decks I've seen really, really focus on powerhousing. I mean, I've only ran into two or three players that have actually been able to use a card effect to get rid of Spirit Reaper. Whether it's because they didn't have uh, effects that would target cards I had, or because it was because they were just too stupid to target my Spirit Reaper, I honestly can't say. But uh, it's... You would think it's an easy card to get around, but apparently for most people it's not. And normally that would be the end of um, of the monsters in the burn deck, but I went ahead and added two Vanity's Ruler, and I added those because even though, you know, they're higher than level four, which is like the majority of what we wanted to avoid uh, during this whole thing, um, while this card is out, your, your opponent cannot special summon any monsters, which is also what I've seen a lot of decks focus around. So it can really screw their day over, and it tops at 2,500 instead of 1,400 for attack. So it's, it's a nice little card to throw out there, and the reason I threw it in there is because we had a trap car card called Vanity's Emptiness. And what it did was it essentially did the same thing, except it prevented both you and your opponent from special summoning monsters, and... If a card went from the field or deck to the graveyard, or to your graveyard, 
then you had to destroy it. So I kind of thought, you know, Vanity's Ruler in the burn deck is going to be more effective than Vanity's Emptiness because, you know, they're going to have to destroy your monster, which we've got cards in here to prevent that kind of shit. And, you know, you can still special summon should the need arise. Like your giant germ. You can still special summon your giant germ. So th that's why I threw it in there. It's not in the test deck. But, you know, I'm showing you my burn deck, not the test deck. So, you know, uh, up yours. <laughs> but um, next we've got three wave motion cannons. And this card, we have it because once we activate it uh, during each of our standby phases we add one spell counter to it and during our main phase we can send it to the graveyard and deal a thousand points of damage to our opponent for each spell counter that was on it so this is really nice especially as a mind game because it it consciously puts your opponent on that time frame you know they either need to take away your life points in however many turns or they need to get rid of your wave motion cannon so it's it's really nice because it throws a lot of players off their game and it's really nice if you are going against a powerhouse deck and they keep you know destroying your monsters before you can really do anything with them so it's it's a good de good card to have in there for an all-around type of purpose next up we've got three pots of duality now this card um it says excavate the top three cards of your deck so for those of you who don't know because I sure as hell didn't when I started using this deck excavate means you either need to send them to the graveyard or banish them so that your opponent can see them as well and then it allows you to choose one of those three cards and put it in your hand and then shuffle the other two back in your deck so much like worm links it's kind of a good uh get a jump start on one of the cards you're looking for uh so you know that's also helpful after that we've got two nightmare steel cage now this is just a stall card for two of your opponent's turns it's up and it prevents all monsters from attacking both yours and your opponents um after that we've got one level limit area b this is a continuous spell card that forces all monsters that are level four or higher into defense mode doesn't matter if they were summoned before or after level limit was activated they are forced into defense mode so don't let anyone try and slip it by like oh but it was activated um before or it was yeah it was activated before i special summoned my blue eyes white dragon just to name a card off the top of my head uh, it, it doesn't work that way, and they can't switch their cards into attack mode because of level limit. The only way they can switch their cards into attack is either to lower their level with a card that says they lower their level, or to destroy level limit. Uh, after that, we've got two Swords of Revealing Light, which is pretty much the most famous stall card in the game, I believe. But in case you don't know it, it's uh, what it does is all current face down monsters on the field on your opponent's side of the field are flipped face up, not necessarily into attack mode, um, but they're flipped face up and it does not activate their flip effect if they have it. So don't let them pull that shit either. And it prevents your opponent from attacking for three turns three of his turns you can still attack but he can't or she i i don't know um also they can set after you activate this card so don't don't try and bullshit them and say oh swords is up you can't set because it only affects face down when uh when you summon it or activate it rather not summon that's monsters <laughs> So, so don't try to bullshit anyone with that either. Next up, we've got another stall card, Messenger of Peace. This prevents all um, monsters with 1,500 or more attack points from declaring an attack. The only downside is during each of your standby phases, 
to keep it going, you've got to sacrifice 100 life points. If you don't sacrifice that 100, then you have to go ahead and send it to the grave. But that's during your standby phases, so of course you get one free turn, which is nice. Next up, we've got one Meteor of Destruction. Now, this card uh, allows us to deal 1,000 points of damage just real quick to our opponent, but it only works if they have uh, more than 3,000 life points. So you want to make sure you draw it kind of early in the game. I don't know how you could make sure, but if you can, that'd be sweet, right? <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's a good card to have. Next up, we've got two ancient rules. Now, like Vanity's Ruler, I put these in actually for Vanity's Ruler, so they're not in the main deck. The actual test deck, rather. And, you know, it just allows us to special summon a level 5 or higher monster from our hand without tributing. So that's why I have it in there. And then we've got three Dark Bribes. Now, what this card does is it allows us to negate a spell or trap card and um, our opponent goes ahead and draws a card. So, it's, it's, I mean, yeah, it gives them a card, but it also negates a spell or trap card. So, like a Raigeki card or a Dark Hole card that destroys all monsters, you could negate that and you do want to choose your negation carefully because it gives them another card to play so you know but it's still handy after that we've got three magic cylinders now this card you also kind of want to choose your moments because when you activate it or rather when your opponent's monster declares an attack you can activate it and deal damage to your opponent equal to that monster's attack. So, say they were attacking your Neospatianaire Hummingbird with an 1,000 attack point monster. I personally would just can my Hummingbird and take the 200. But, um, say they had a Blue Eyes out, I would activate Magic Cylinder, because that's 3,000 points of damage right there. Uh, after that, we've got Mirror Force, which um, is like Magic Cylinder in the fact that you activate it when an opponent's monster declares an attack, but it's unlike it because your opponent doesn't get dealt damage, you just destroy all face-up attack position monsters. Unless there's a card that's not, um, that isn't affected by Spell or Trap cards, then they stay, but other words, yeah, they're destroyed. After that, again, a card that's activated when um, when an opponent's monster declares an attack, but it banishes the attacking monster. So that's nice. Uh, and again, you want to kind of choose carefully when you use it, because, you know, you could, uh, instead of banishing an effect veiler, you could banish a blue eyes. I would much rather bl banish the blue eyes. I don't know about you. But, uh... Next, we got two Cursor Royals. This card is like Dark Bribe, but it only negates Spell or Trap cards that would destroy cards. So, or just that would destroy one Spell or Trap card, and that's nice. I timed out. Uh, sorry about that. This website's website's kind of uh, kind of weird like that. So, uh, you know, just. Um, Anyways, I was on, uh, what was I on? I was on Curse of Royal. So, again, uh, it's, uh, it, it can o you can only use it against a Spell or Trap card that destroys a Spell or Trap card, like Magical Space, or Mystical Space Typhoon, not Magical. Um, and your opponent doesn't, doesn't destroy a card, or draw a card, rather, so that's nice. After that, we've got Royal Prism. Now this, all it does is lock down the graveyard, both your graveyards. Monsters can't be special summoned from it, which doesn't affect the burn deck because you don't special summon from the graveyard. So, you know, it's kind of a nice card to have in there. Then we've got two Jar of Avarice trap cards. Now this trap card allows us to uh, target five cards in our graveyard 
and add them to our deck, shuffle them into our deck, and then draw one card. Now, this isn't, you know, the first five cards or the most recent five cards. It's whatever five cards you want, which normally I activate it right when I have five cards. So, it's usually every card in my graveyard goes back to my deck. But, uh, y you know, it, it, it kind of depends on when you activate it. But it's just any five cards you want go back into your deck, you shuffle them, then you draw a card. So it's it's good for just reclaiming cards that maybe you really wanted, and it's 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 a good one. We got two of those just in case we need to do it twice per uh, duel, which usually we don't. And, you know, eh, sometimes we go ahead and we use a Jar of Avarice to reclaim a Jar of Avarice to keep the cycle going, and it, people really hate us for that. But it's nice, you know, it's, it's a combo, it's legal, and it's helpful. So there, there's really nothing wrong with it. Uh, next up, we got two Secret Barrels. This trap card allows us to deal 200 damage to our opponent for not only each card they control, so each card they've got both face up and face down, in their monster and spell and trap zones, but each card in their hand as well. So if they've got five cards in their hand, five cards in their spell and trap card, and five or uh, spell and trap zones, and five cards in their monster zones, that's three thousand damage right there. So uh, this is also a card where you kind of want to pick your moments wisely, but you don't want to wait too long. Because I've seen it to where people have tributed, like, their whole field to summon two monsters. And then it's like, well, shit, now, now that's, like, a thousand points of damage gone. Or 800 points of damage gone. Uh, and then we've got Just Desserts, which is like Secret Barrel, except it's 500 points of damage. And it's just for the monsters they control. So you definitely want to activate it as soon as they get a full field before they can activate any effects or tribute or anything like that. And it works well with this next trap card, Ojama Trio. Now what this card does is it summons three tokens with uh, zero attack and 1000 defense to your opponent's side of the field. And they can't be tributed and each time they're destroyed your opponent gets dealt 300 points of damage for each de uh, destroyed token. So if they were to play like a Dark Hole, for instance, and destroy all three, they just lost 900 points of damage. Uh, next up, we've got Needle Wall, which I, this is my burn deck. This isn't the standard burn deck. And the reason I have it is because it helps me clear the monster's field from my, or for my opponent's side. Each turn, you activate or you roll a die, and you, uh, from your right hand side, whatever um, number that die lands on, you destroy the corresponding monster. Now, of course, if there's no monster on that space, nothing happens. It was a wasted roll. If it lands on a six, you roll again. Uh, and then also, my personal burn deck, Scrap Iron Scarecrow. This negates a monster's attack, and instead of destroying it, you go ahead and you flip it again. You set it again, so you can keep using that. Now, what's in the original uh, burn deck, I can't really say. I know that they're in my side deck here, which is all the cards I've replaced as we've beefed up the burn deck. But, you know, the test deck has also changed as well. So I don't know specifically which cards are in the burn, the main burn deck now, but um, this is, you know, I've only um, replaced uh, six cards, so uh, it is still an overall idea of what you're facing, and I've told you one card that I did replace. So you, you have a basic idea now. Uh, thanks for watching. Please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more great content. We're going to be posting every Wednesday from now on. And I'll be doing a lot of uh, structures. If you'd like to see a certain type of deck, I will do my best 
to either make my own version of that kind of deck or get that kind of deck offline and post it or whatever you want. Uh, just go ahead and leave a comment and I'll check it out. Uh, also, if you have any ideas of how I can make this deck better, I would appreciate that. I'll be sure to check them out. And again, if you have any interest in joining our clan here on Dueling Network, we're the Archangels. Go ahead and find myself by the same name as I'm using here. Or um, my partner and our leader, the Angel of Death 1, here on the Dueling Network. Message us, tell us you're interested in joining, and we will be glad to explain any questions you have about our clan and, you, you know, explain how you can join and walk you through that process.